Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so for today, we'll be going over uh, the narrative and descriptive writing that you would have completed over the break, right? That we would have worked on. Uh, so uh, we'll be going through them. Uh, but before we get started, uh, just a couple of reminders about uh, the assignment that we have, right? We'll be going over the blue sky and uh, crime and punishment when we uh, uh, go over the assignment for next week, where right? we'll compile and we'll be going over. Uh, one of the books will be in the Sora library that you'll be able to find, right? And there will be a PDF file as well that you'll be able to work on. Uh, yesterday, uh, so... Yesterday, we would have worked on uh, the IGC uh, SC textbook, right? The summary and the commentary that we would have worked on. Uh, today, we'll be going over a descriptive and narrative writing that you would have completed uh, that we'll be going over uh, for class for today, right? And also, there are other assignments that you could be planning ahead in time in uh, brainstorming as well. Uh, to start us off, uh, we'll begin with the first assignment that we have about home. Uh, we would also have taken a look at a sample sort of essay over it, uh, but we'll ha all have our own definition of home, right? Each and every one of, of us would have an individual definition of home that we'll have, right? And so again, are there volunteers who like to read for us, who like to start us off with the first assignment that we have? So may I? Yeah, could you please read for us? What most people think is that home is just a building made of concrete and wood. But it is really the meaning home. To me, home is just a building sleep for the night. To me, home is a feeling. A feeling of a relief in your most stressful time. Oh. Uh, a feeling of happiness among the saddest days. A feeling of warmth during the coldest winters. The phrase home is where the heart is, what it means. It is where you can unwind the untangled minds from the hostile and bustle of the fast modern world. It is unexplained international feeling and could cross oceans brings out memories and make a person feel at home regardless of the physical features of their imagine of their whole house you don't need a mansion that overlooks the sea to find the perfect home it is just a small hut in the rice field home is the place you can feel at ease where you, you have nothing to worry about but your own self. Imagine the moral moments of the Sahara Desert, moving day and night without but without nothing but stacks of clothes and canisters of what little water they had. Along with the line of camels, they move with no end inside. Do they have a time a home, you ask? Well, most of you would say no, but that's where you would be wrong for they may not have a stable shelter, but they have a home, not a permanent building where we would lie in, but rather the feeling of staying together with family, not sleeping on the comfort of a king-sized bed, but rather comfort of resting between the warming hands of their parents. For them, home is not a good, pl not a place to cook fancy meals, but rather a place to eat slightly decent food with families and friends. The soldiers of World War I, the muddy trenches were what they had to console in order to turn to their enemies into ash. Were they happy? No. Life was boring and there was a new epidemic every week. Trench foot was the disease everyone feared of. Muddy grounds and dead trees, they ate roasted meats with the loaves. The sound of gun and fire and the sight of dead and dying men was more than enough to give them PTSD and fall shock. 
No as epic as moving movies and novels make them sound. Life in Trench weren't epic. It was more just more of just waiting for the time to die. However, these cold-blooded men found a way to make the dreadful, miserable, and mind-boggling place a better place to live. Songs were written, novels were made, and at, to this day, some of the poems written in the these muddy waters by the most battle-scared soldiers in the history of mankind still remains one of the sweetest and ever heard by people. They laugh with their comrades, they drink beer with their shift school wish fun dinner and dance with their tummies. Yes, what was thought impossible became possible as the snipers live with nothing but rock card cookies and bullets inside fake dead trees. For them, home was anything but can briefly take cover their lives. For animals, yes, animals have homes too. Whenever it's roaming hearts of African elephants or in the sol or the solitary bears of the Siberian winters, for them it's nothing but a place to sleep, a place to safely eat their freshly killed prey, a place with lush bamboo so the pandas can munch on them all day, all night. A nest to beast and raise their chick, chicks or hills of ant and range wars on. The cave of great wolf packs is not only a place to feast on their kill, but also den for young ones to play. While the fish sinks will make any sand hills its home. As the monkeys jump from tree to tree carrying their offsprings, the frogs safely guard their eggs from frog infested waters and the owls feed their hatchling into the hole of large trees. Yet um, home is any place they can make use of, no matter how rough it looks. Home, home, home. What is home? Many definitions for which can be termed correct for the question, and you've tried to answer it within six paragraphs, but that isn't good for the vast topic. Home is not a structure of stability, rather a place you can feel safe and free. Home is where someone belongs, but it's not required to be. Why can't home be a concrete location? Simple. Cause the sky may be sky for years to come, but a home. A home is changeable based on what life experience you're, you're going through. Home can change from time to time based on what the people person feels what is home and what is not. Before you can cl just call home to the office table to sleep on or cool hotel room, you still have to inter internally ask yourself before you reconsider it as your home. Are you able to see your loved ones? Is it conditions of your safety? Do you like surroundings? Are you really happy? So what is real feelings of being home? You ask, well, for me, home is nothing more than loving warmth of my parents. Hence, that will always welcome me, no matter what the situation is. Okay, uh, so again, uh, we would have read through an example of an assignment about home that we're able to find. And different people, again, would have had different opinions or definition of home that we would have found right in our uh, sort of narrative. Uh, uh, and in descriptive writing that we might have been able to find, right? And uh, we would have also taken a uh, look at a sample as well. Um, narrative writing would be having sort of the storytelling elements to it, right? Descriptive writing would be more of like uh, the five century details or sort of the uh, imagery, right? The uh, sort of descriptive uh, figurative language that we might be able to find. So slightly different, uh, but some people might have we weaved uh, both the narrative and descriptive writing component into one piece of writing uh, that they might have done a sort of combination piece for. And we'll see more examples of that uh, as we read through the different uh, assignments, right, that we'll be going over. Um, so uh, the next assignment that we have would have been 
uh, again, a sort of a combination of narrative and descriptive writing piece that we find. Uh, who would have written it? The person who would have written on the Momentous School Book Fair that we find. Again, uh, are there volunteers who like to be reading through uh, the next Thanks, assignment teacher. that we have? Can I read, teacher? Yeah, could you please read for us? Okay, teacher. Momentous School Book Fair. Our school has had decided to hold a Grand Book Fair event after the assembly in the gym. Students could give away their old textbooks and knowledgeable books. The day started with mountains of books sitting majestically in front of the school gate. The books waved to the students with their illustrations. Before the event, we had to listen to an interestingly boring speech from our principal. The time during the speech seemed like a never-ending exam as yawns were here and there. It was five minutes before the event and all of us were so excited that we could hear wumbles from the stomachs and legs. Ring! It's high time! Students became sonic, sonic the hedgehog as they dashed the assembly hall. The whole gym was, was as dreamlike as Wonderland. The books were decked out, fascinating everyone. The covers of the books attracted me like a magnet. The pleasant aroma ar from these food stalls punched my nose. The steamy dim sums were so mouthwatering that I might eat a hundred plates of them. As I tried the tuna sandwich, it seemed that I had a tongue massage. It was as flavorsome as Turkish delight. In the game stalls, there were loads of options of games that were made that made me want to fly. The sound of students tapping tapping the game consoles so loud that the wet sound waves could blow away the books. When the event was about to end, to end, the students' moans stretched. For miles later, I thought about the memorable things in the event. This event glued into my brain forever. Okay, uh, so the next assignment that we find uh, would have been on the topic of uh, the Momentous School Book Fair. So uh, again, uh, describing about the event that the person would have attended right at school that we find. Uh, again, a lot of descriptive imagery that we're able to find a uh, ring, right, with the onomatopoeia sounds uh, that we find as well. Again, uh, sort of the uh, mop watering, again, a lot of uh, adjectives, outbursts, pleasant aroma. So again, smell, right, so a lot of uh, touch, smell, taste, uh, hearing, and sight, right, they're able to see uh, that the person would have applied and would have made use of, right, in their uh narrative right in some sense storytelling but also descriptive right with the five different senses uh that the person would have used to describe the event right that we would have been able to take a look right um okay uh, so taking a look at the next assignment that we have uh the next assignment would have been on the topic of camping uh that also a number of people would have chosen to write about uh, here again, we find both a narrative component and descriptive component that we're able to find. Uh, again, uh, are there volunteers who like to be going through uh, the next assignment that we have? Jimmy, I. Yeah, could you please read for us? Many people hate camping. They just like to be cozy as a lazy bear sleeping in a comfortable, warm cave. On the other hand, I like camping. It can be a big risk in the dark forest, but since my hobby is traveling, I would go camping every year. But camping can be like a kid playing, a kid playground too, where there are many fun things you can enjoy on every last minute of it. So I wanna, I want on, I went on a camping trip with my family and a few of my cousins. As soon as I arrived to the camping area, I was excited like a four-year-old kid getting a treat. I quickly stepped out of the stuffy car and suck a huge amount of air into my nose. The mountain and trees were very close, like a best friend. The view is amazing. The trees looked like a powerful army. Then I started to unpack the things and the tent. 
I knew it was going to be a fun trip. There was full of leafy greens, but there's one thing I was very scared of. They were wild animals and they are dangerous as extinct dinosaurs. So I would enjoy very every physical surrounding when I am only with my family. We always have grilled sausages and meat on every trip. And at midnight, we would have marshmallow roasting roasting it with a wooden stick near the campfire and telling short horse or each other experience stories. Then we would go into the tent and play cards before the late night sleep. And every morning we would go, we would do exercise as quick as possible so we can go into the woods and start exploring. It was sometime as creepy as stepping into a haunted house because the trees were tall and the sunlight would disappear sometimes because of the tall trees. We never play hide and seek in order to not get lost in the creepy woods, so we built a house, tree house, and it was a small cottage, as small as a cottage, but cute and comfortable to stay, so we always stay there for four or three hours and come back. It was always a fun thing, like going to a water park. Usually, we would stay there for a week and come back, and it was also a memorable trip to me. Okay, uh, so again, we have another uh, narrative uh, writing piece on uh, camping uh, that a number of people, that a number of people would have chosen to write about. Uh, we do see a lot of similes, metaphors that we might be able to find uh, can be like a play, pl- uh, kid playground, uh, as cozy as a lazy bear. So again, a lot of similes that we find that we're able to see as well, right? That could be effective in both narrative and descriptive writing uh, that we're able to see, right? Uh, there are dangerous as extinct dinosaurs. Again, a lot of similes metaphors that we find, right? That adds more uh, sort of uh, uh, vivacity or sort of uh, the uh, energy or sort of uh, the reality of the scene, right? That we're able to see that it adds more uh, sort of motion and also uh, the realness of the scene, right? Uh, uh, helping us sort of imagine what the experience would have been like, right? That are helpful uh, to us as readers, right? Uh, providing a sort of uh, uh, shared sort of experience that we might be able to feel as we uh, read through the text as well, right? That we might be able to find. Um, the next assignment that we have uh, would have been uh, another narrative uh, writing piece that we have. Again, having some descriptive writing components to it, right? That we might be able to find. Uh, the next, where the next assignment would have been a trip to Bangkok that we find. Again, uh, are there volunteers who like to be reading through the next assignment that we have? Yeah, could you please read for us? A trip to Bangkok. No words would, could describe how excited I was to go to another country for the first time, not to mention it's not an only one day trip, but a five day trip. It's enough for me to enjoy the luxuries of Bangkok and I was only seven years old. It was also my first time in a plane and I was so thrilled that it almost made me forget about the seatbelt. I sat on the seat and made myself comfortable. I looked out the window and saw the clouds at the same level as me. It was beautiful, like cotton candy floating within the sky while slowly moving. When I arrived on the first day, I decided to relax and settle down. I lied on the bed that was as comfy as my old bed. It almost felt like home. The next day, I decided to go to Dream World for a visit. I thought it was just a normal amusement park, but I was wrong. There were statues of different characters from different shows and cartoons everywhere. There were various types of games and castles. As a kid, I was thrilled to see something like this. It was as if it was my own personal playground. I explored every inch of it. Of course, my parents obviously got tired. The next day, my parents took me to the aquarium there. It felt like I was floating under wa- under the water. I saw many types of sea creatures and I would dive from one place to another like a leopard just to check out some fishes. 
The second day wasn't my favorite. We just went to the, this market packed with people. It was very hot and I could hear the sounds of cars groaning in the distance. The last day has finally come. I wasn't really sad to leave the hotel because I had grown accustomed to it, but it was really fun. I hopped onto the car with my parents and we went to the airport. Who knows, maybe someday I might come back again. Okay, uh, so again, uh, we would have had another uh, sort of narrative writing piece on a trip to Bangkok and Dreamworld uh, that we might have been able to find. Uh, again, there are a lot of uh, sort of descriptive writing that we find, like a cotton candy floating within the sky. Uh, again, some uh, similes that we find as well, but uh, again, a lot of uh, storytelling elements that we might be able to find as well, games and castles, so again, uh, to the aquarium. Uh, that we find as well, uh, the sounds of cars groaning, right, uh, sort of, uh, again, uh, uh, figurative language that we're able to find as well, right, one place to another, like a leopard, uh, a simile that we find as well, right, so uh, similes and metaphors, figurative language, uh, again, storytelling elements, right, all adding sort of the uh, rhythm and uh, also the uh, the uh, vivacity or energy to the sort of scene that we find, uh, helping us sort of imagine uh, the what the uh, experience might have been like. Uh, perhaps even cinematic effects to it, helping us imagine what the experience might have been like, right, as a moving picture, right, that we might have been able to uh, sort of explore as well, right. Um, the next assignment that we have uh, would be an assignment on a narrative writing piece on a day at the beach, right, that we're able to find, right, so again, uh, there would be narrative or storytelling elements to it, as well as descriptive components that we'll be able to find. Uh, again, are there uh, volunteers, additional volunteers, who would like to be reading through the next assignment that we have? Yeah, could you please read for us? Day at the beach. That's the ice cream of the song I want to listen to. And there's a small one who is doing it. One was the green. What's the green? 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 Back, you. I lay back, put on my sunglasses, and just absorb the intense rays of sun on this blistering hot summer day. Yesterday, I found myself with wanting to go to the beach just by myself and enjoy the peace. I couldn't sleep all night. It felt like my eyes were being forced open by an eye speculum. But now, all my worries and thoughts were being washed over, just like how the waves were watching, were washing over the shore. I could hear the children laughing, the adults gossiping, the birds chirping, the beach ball bouncing here and there, and the annoying whistle sound that the lifeguard makes every three minutes. My eyes are closed, but yet I could still feel the hot, but somehow comforting sunshine on my face. The smell of the salty breeze tickled my nose when I take a fresh breath in. Just focusing on my breathing and nothing else takes my crippling anxiety away. It felt like I was the only person in the whole world. Acknowledging the fact that I was taking the time to focus on myself makes you feel safe in my whole body and soul. Just as I felt like I was having a wonderful time at the beach, a soft but sandy ball hit me in the face. Boom! Day ruined just like that. My whole body was tense. Maybe I should just just have stayed home. I thought to myself. I took a deep breath knowing that I might not be able to control the anger and rage that was fooling inside of me. I set up just to find out that the three little boys just turned my day around. I took another breath. I took another deep breath. The deepest my lungs would allow. I took the ball with my shaking hands, which had nail that could pop the ball in one scratch. But did I set my rage free like setting a thing, setting a tiger free from a cage? No, I didn't. I knew better that 
I knew better than to take my frustration out on kids who are just trying to enjoy their day as yachts. So I just rolled the, back, the ball back to their feet, got up and packed my things. I shook my body as the grain of sand drops. Definitely not the day I was looking forward to have, but I, I could have been worse with, I could have been worse like being hit by, being bit by a shark, right? To be honest, I'm grateful that I took time to make myself feel better though. It worked at first, but seemed to fail later on. At the end of the day, it was me trying that matter the most. Before I fell, I bought, I brought myself another, I bought myself another ice cream. Ice cream is like happiness in a cone to me. Okay, uh, so uh, again, another narrative piece uh, and some descriptive components that we find about a day at the beach, right? That we would have just read about. Uh, again, a lot of uh, sort of uh, descriptive language that we find laughing, gossiping, chirping, the ING sounds to build, build a sense of rhythm, right? Balancing and uh, sort of that we find, right? The ING sounds, uh, sort of the uh, uh, the uh, the auditory sounds, right, of laughing and gossiping, right, sort of the uh, uh, the sound that we might be able to uh, sort of hear uh, in the scene that we would be able to find. Uh, again, a lot of descriptive writing that we find, smell of the salty breeze, so again, uh, sort of smell that we find, uh, but not just that, uh, but sound that we find, right, also the touch that we find, again, uh, sort of the sensory details that we might be able to find uh, in the writing that we find here as well. Uh, blistering hot summer day, uh, again. Uh, a lot of uh, sensory details that the person would have used and uh, boom, right, of the onomatopoeia sound that they would have used as well. Uh, again, a lot of uh, uh, imagery that they have built, right, to help us sort of uh, imagine what the day at the beach would have been like, right, uh, that we find a lot of uh, sort of colorful imagery that we find, right, that helps us sort of uh, experience or imagine what the soothing, comforting, uh, sort of uh, day at the beach would have been like, what the experience would have been like, right? Uh, for us to be able to imagine, right? Um, the next, the next assignment uh, that we have uh, would have been an assignment on a uh, 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 sports tournament uh, that a lot of people would also have chosen to write about, about their narrative or the descriptive writing piece that they would have chosen to write, right? So again, uh, sort of mixing or uh, combining the components of uh, the uh, storytelling elements as well as the sensory details, right, that would have been part of descriptive component, descriptive writing, right, that what they would have combined and used, right, in their respective writing. Uh, so again, are there volunteers who like to be reading through uh, the next assignment that we have?
Jay, you're muted. Okay, uh, we might have time for a couple more, couple more assignments that we'll be reading through. Uh, are there additional volunteers who like to be reading through the next assignment that we have? I... Yeah, could you please read for us? It's hard to describe it. This feeling that I'm having right now, it's like dizzy feeling, but much more than that. It's like my brain is going to erupt like a boiling volcano, and I can, and I can feel the inside of my skull burning. It feels like a bunch of insects are in my brain eating me up from the inside. That's how it feels like, tired, nauseous, sophisticated, drained. The most important football match of my life is beginning really soon. And our team needs to win, we really do. I've been preparing and practicing for this match for practically the whole year. And this match is going to decide what my future is going to be. The heavy <laughs> pressure that I'm feeling is interrupted by the sudden whistle. All of our teammates huddle up before kick off, wrapping our arms around each other and hyping ourselves. This going by in a blur. The game starts in only a few minutes. After our huddle, we go on the bench for a last drink. I chuck down at least a third of my bottle. Once the match has begun, everything turns into haze of tackle, free kicks, dribbles and passes. None of the team score. My headache is getting worse and worse every second. By the time the match is coming to an end, everybody is exhausted. It's even. The crowd is on the crowd is on their toes, cheering, erupting the stadium. The coaches are yelling and it's all too much. I can't do it anymore. I just stand there in the middle of the field, completely zoned out, unable to move my feet. My skull is aching. The rest of my body is unable to compre comprehend anything. I feel like I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. I want to scream. It's all too much. Hey, Allison, what the hell are you doing? I see coach madly yelling at me from afar with wide, confused eye. Skin is pricking, coaches yelling, echoing through my head. My entire family is watching me play. I can't let them down. I need to win. I need to do this. Yeah, okay, I can do this. There's only a few minutes left. I make it past one of the other's team halfbacks. The ball close to my feet. I can do this. I sprint, the ball safely following my movements. Haley, my teammate, is running on the other side. There are two players defending in front of us. Hey, it's Violet, another teammate, suddenly calling from my left. Having sported to catch up, we're three against two. I quickly passed Violet the ball, running towards the middle of the penalty box. Casey, another one of our teammates, is there with Violet and two defenders in blue jerseys as well as their keeper. Violet may cross. The ball flies high above their heads. Casey jumping up to the head, it into the goal. She misses. It lands against my chest and I bring it down, kicking with all my might, making it fly straight up in the roof of the net. The keeper now were near able to reach it. It's a goal. We won. We really won. I was roughly surrounded by all my teammates. The pile is huge and some are grabbing my head subsequently yelling in my ears of happiness. Noises, too much noises, loud, too loud. Yelling, too much yelling, stop, I need to stop. Much, I need to get out of here. My head is getting worse, really, really worse. In the midst of all, I fell down. Everything turns into a huge blur. My head, my ear, my brain, my everything hurts. 
I'm screaming on the top of my lungs. Everything hurts. The inside my brain hurts so much. I feel as I'm going to explore, explode in any second, like a ticky bone. I suddenly see red liquid around me, blood. I scream again out of horror. Where is it coming from? Am I going to die? I feel like it. All of a sudden, more people are around me. Everything is still too blurry for me to tell who's who. I can't see much other than striped jerseys. The group around me is huge, and I hear somebody yelling, call an ambulance, do something. Don't just stand there and watch somebody call an ambulance. The next thing I know, everything goes completely blank. Okay, uh, so again, uh, we do find another sort of narrative writing piece about uh, the tournament uh, with sort of descriptive components to it as well, right? So storytelling as well as sort of uh, sensory details that we might be able to find. Uh, feels like a bunch of insects are in my body. So again, uh, sort of figurative uh, writing, right, uh, that we feel, right, uh, that would have been comparison made that we are able to feel. Um, again, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, vivid motion or sort of language that adds sort of motion, rhythm, right, as if we're uh, in, on the tournament, right, on the uh, ground, right, uh, feeling what the teammates and what the uh, coach, right, what the uh, individual would have felt, right, on the tournament, on the ground that we would have found uh, the person uh, at, right, and uh, some words are uh, long, uh, some uh, sentences are long, short, one word sentences, so they all add sort of the rhythm to it as well, right? Uh, depending on the length, right? We want, we really want, so again, the emphasis, right? Uh, is, uh, is contrasted to long, long sentences, short sentences, right? Uh, some conversations are used as well, right? To add more sort of the uh, reality of the uh, experience of what that might have been like as well. Where is it coming from? Am I going to die? Some rhetorical questions that we find, right? Questions that we uh, are not necessarily trying to find an answer for, but we're trying to make a point or we're trying to emphasize something. So again, a lot of uh, components to add more uh, energy, right? To the spirit, to the scene that we find as well. Uh, some uh, apostrophes that we find with uh, sort of emphasis and exclamation points that we find, right, to have more sort of uh, moving nature, right, as if uh, sort of a, um, a moving picture or cinematic sort of experience of uh, us being able to sort of imagine or uh, even picture what the experience might have been like, right, creating that kind of effect for us, right, a uh, moving effect for us, right, uh, to be able to uh, sort of vicariously or uh, through that person's eye uh, experience, what the experience might have been like, right? That we're able to see. Um, so, uh, in fact, we would uh, have to uh, call it a day since we do have only a couple of minutes, right? Uh, to uh, till the end of the class. Uh, but there would be remaining assignments that you'll be able to take a look on uh, more assignments on what is home, uh, excursion day, on uh, camping, uh, more uh, uh, assignments about uh, tournaments that you'll be able to find, as well as uh, yeah, more tournaments that you'll find. Um, as well as uh, camping, right, that you'll be able to find, right? So again, uh, we would be going over uh, more of narrative and descriptive writing, right? Uh, storytelling, sensory details, right? Descriptive components uh, that we will be covering from our uh, syllabus, right, that we'll be going over. So you'll be able to uh, find these examples. It will be under the file section of our class. So you can take a look at uh, what your peers would have written so that you can uh, get a sense of what these writings might be for our future uh, sort of assignments that we'll be having as well for our future reference as well, right? Okay, uh, so again, uh, as always, right, at the end of the class, right, uh, we'll have the reminder for the assignment that will be due at the end of the week. Uh, so just a reminder about the blue sky or crime and punishment, right, that you could be choosing uh, to write about for this week's assignment that we'll be working on, right? Okay, uh, so that will be due at the end of the week. Um, so yeah, hope you all have a great rest of your day and we'll be seeing each other uh, when we meet next time.
Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Bye, Chair. Bye, Chair. Bye, Bye, Chair. 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 Bye,